So uh, we move now uh, to two of you that will consider the waste um, issue, which uh, uh, are uh, uh, Samina in, in Bangladesh and Zilai in Pakistan. So uh, just to remain in Pakistan, let's start with uh, Samina. Um, Samina Oishi is currently working as a visitor research associate at Cutting University in the Sustainable Engineering Group. She has a background in sustainability management and environment biology from uh, the same university in, in Australia. She's uh, passionate about waste management and experienced in methods of educating sustainability. Uh, aspiring to influence the youth of Bangladesh to live a zero waste lifestyle. Thank you so much, Ricardo, for your inter introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Samina, and today I want to talk about uh, waste management and uh, how sustainability education can influence the youth uh, population uh, to combat the issue of waste management that leads to climate change. So. We, uh, we are deeply emotionally connected to our environment, but uh, as we are trying to fix our environment uh, with so many statistical, um, like uh, reducing two degree temperature and all the thing, uh, we have to keep in mind that we can't fix this problem without building our, fixing our connection with the environment. Our environment and nature provides us all, all the things that we need, but unfortunately for past 150 years, human, uh, we have damaged the environment through industrialization and overconsumption. Uh, and uh, nature is trying to convey this message through uh, climate change and uh, we have seen this in past few uh, years in um, most aggressive way, like uh, record-breaking droughts and uh, wildfires uh, across the globe. So from a, uh, being from a developing country where population growth is the main issue and uh, uh, poverty is another big issue, um, the uh, waste management is not considered as one of the uh, things that needs to be solved first. So. I would like to share one of my stories where I started these activities. Uh, back in 2015, I went to Chirang Hill Tracks for a family vacation. And uh, I went to the hills and there were so many plastics and uh, I, I carried a bag with me so that I can collect what I generate and I don't throw it in the nature. But everyone in my other family members were just mocking me or they were just doing it intentionally to, uh, uh, just to uh, do it uh, because they think it's the responsibility of the government to clean it up, not our responsibility. So that intrigued me that because this shouldn't be the way we should think because we all live in this nature and it is all of our responsibility, not just government's responsibility to keep it clean. So. And uh, uh, I would like to mention one thing that most of our um, family members were really, really educated and one of them had PhD degrees, but uh, still I couldn't um, um, convey this message to him that uh, it's not the uh, proper thing to do. Then I realized the importance of sustainability education to solve this issue because uh, otherwise uh, we, we don't, we can't create this connection. We just think about uh, in the um, normal education system, we just think about uh, how to make money or how to uh, be more economically independent instead of uh, considering society and environment. So, so when I uh, was doing my research, uh, I chose sustainability education during my master's research and uh, I specifically focused on engineering students. So, and that, uh, as my uh, fellow uh, speakers have uh, told already that uh, the imp uh, if I quote Kulsum uh, Siddiqui, she said that uh, the impact an individual actions can take is a huge thing. And uh, if we do it collectively, then it will be more effective uh, in the 
uh, for uh, solving the climate change issues. Another uh, another thing, uh, and uh, uh, my fellow speaker said is the uh, how our ancestors used to uh, live a sus more sustainable life than we are living, and it is better to for uh, like uh, uh, follow them instead of the uh, fast fashion culture or the uh, or following the Kardashians. I think uh, that's a more better approach to look at climate crisis than any other thing. So uh, global warming and cl uh, climate change uh, happens due to the uh, global temperature increase and uh, uh, sorry. There are uh, uh, different substances that impact climate change and its relevance to cl waste management sector. Uh, uh, and in order to uh, redesign our relationship with waste, we need not only think sociologically, but uh, we need to be um, uh, think uh, from a, um, a source um, perspective than from where the source is coming from. So. Uh, um, what I have done uh, is uh, uh, for uh, influencing people in an individual level, I have created a platform in social media, the Waste Free Lifestyle, where I uh, uh, share tips and tricks to be a more, uh, lead a more sustainable lifestyle. And uh, now I am planning to move it to the next level and um, creating alternatives for the uh, things uh, that are creating waste, for example, uh, uh, products like shampoo and uh, soap that come with plastic packaging and I'm trying to make it in a so, uh, powder form that will come in a uh, paper um, bag or something like that with less packaging and uh, we can just mix water and it will be work as the same thing. And, uh, and the other thing I'm um, working on is trying to make some workshops on uh, in, to educate um, organ, uh, people uh, from organizations or the uh, children um, to influence them to live a, a more sustainable lifestyle through connecting them with the environment because if we love the uh, if we love our planet then it will uh, automatically be our responsibility to protect it the steps uh, uh, we can take uh, the individual level in the individual level we can uh, do a zero waste lifestyle uh, and that is uh, producing uh, less waste uh, through, uh, throughout the year and if you have watched those videos where uh, people just use their uh, messenger amount of uh, uh, waste in one year or four years but those are uh, inspirational but and that doesn't solve the bigger issue and for that we need to uh, be uh, work collectively and uh, go, uh, we need to go to the source of where the trash is gathered where, uh, which is the most industries uh, uh, and uh, the government need to work on um, the government need to work on creating legislations to control that thing uh, uh, another thing we can do in individual level is avoiding the packaging, but also uh, uh, reaching out to the uh, organizations and work with them to store and minimize their uh, uh, use of unnecessary packaging that could be potentially m much easier to reduce their waste. Uh, an example I can give you is from Bangladesh, uh, the garbage men, uh, they're uh, so, uh, sorting uh, and collecting uh, Door to door waste collection, and there are a door to door waste collection service, and making it easy for everyone to manage their waste on a fast moving life. This is a, a trash to cash service that uh, provides scheduled waste collection from households and corporations on a recycling platform. Uh, the goal is to stop waste from getting dumped and uh, in landfills and turn them into recycled resources. So, uh, just a few days back, I was very inspired to see that one of the big uh, contributors of uh, plastic uh, waste generation, um, um, Unilevers, they have, and they are actually sponsoring this initiative, which is a good move from a big company. And uh, some of the other uh, things that uh, the youth of South uh, Asia are doing are creating uh, eco bricks from plastic uh, bags and wrappers, then uh, um, another initiative was from a, uh, a guy from advertisement company he left his job and started uh, um, zero waste um, 
pro, uh, pro, pro uh, movement uh, called ReArt. It's in India, and uh, they are pro producing toothpaste and uh, which comes in powder form in a glass jar, and uh, which uh, generates um, far less waste. And then uh, also uh, soaps. Uh, I think someone else just unmuted themselves. It's okay. So uh, another thing is uh, uh, like uh, creating a. Uh, 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 um, uh, small bubbles of water that dissolves uh, and, um, may, uh, and and there are cleansers in it to reduce the uh, waste of plastics and uh, all these things uh, are in an individual level and uh, but if we uh, if the government can uh, subsidize this uh, then it will help and inspire other people to be more involved in these initiatives and uh, create a more sustainable lifestyle. Lastly, I would like to uh, say a thing like uh, human beings are contagious and one of our uh, way, ways to infect people is through nonverbal communication. So uh, if you want to test this idea, you can do a little experiment like you can just stand uh, uh, in a place and uh, look at uh, above and you will see slowly there will be a crowd of people and they are, they are all following you. So uh, you can try this uh, to uh, solve the uh, waste management issue like uh, you can uh, you can start uh, doing the uh, waste management and share your stories and then that will actually inspire other people to get involved and uh, do more things for the environment. Thank you and just one quote to finish off. We, uh, at, as Gandhi said, we have enough resources to um, meet our need but not our needs. So let's just focus on that and reduce our waste and recycling it because recycling is always the last thing we, we should do because it's in it uh, itself it's a uh, uh, resource uh, it's not an, a resource efficient process thank you so much thanks to you thanks to you, Tamina thank you very much and for so also for the encouragement to follow the example so we will remain on the same topic about moving to Pakistan and I will have the pleasure of giving the floor to Dilai Mariam uh, who is uh, the founder director of ISP Environmental Solutions Limited, uh, ISP is for International Services Pakistan, that uh, she started um, soon after um, participating as a, as a woman entrepreneur in the United Nations General Assembly in November 2019. Um, she's a PhD scholar with more than 14 years of experience in business development for alternate solutions in waste management. Uh, working working in, in, in this field uh, of practical solution is her core expertise. Uh, she received the Global Winner Award in Silicon Valley in 2016 and was also selected as a speaker at Vienna Energy Forum 2017 as a woman entrepreneur. Um, in one year, no, in 2019, she successfully managed a waste recycling project and received a USAID grant. She was then invited as a woman entrepreneur in the United. Oh, no, that I already said. That. I'm sorry. Um, her startup has been selected for the NIC LUMS acceleration program in 2020 and Accelerate Prosperity 2021 in the field of environment. She is also an advisor for a non-profit organization known as GreenFuturePK.com and has also been a climate reality leader since 2015 and country coordinator for an international non-profit organization known as Let's do it since 2018. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of more details. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much. You Thank you, Ricardo. Enough for you to go into the integrated waste management system. For business. Okay. For Thank business. you so much, everyone. And it was wonderful hearing everyone of, of the youth taking part so, uh, so anxiously in a in a field which was not older enough 
but a young field which has a huge impact on the environment, which is a climate change. So here I go with my presentation. I'll not take more time. Yeah, we can see it now. Okay, okay. thank you so much. So um, I've been working in the field of environment for the last more than more than ten years, and uh, got my degree in the similar thing. And after getting that degree, I realized that rather than um, just counting on the on the problems we have, let's get into the solutions. How we can tackle these solutions? How we can integrate the waste management system? So my company is there. It's ISP Environmental Solutions, Dosti Mahal say, like be a friend with your environment and how the impact of waste management and circular economy could be on the climate change. A very brief agenda, the historical background and how the circular economy works and how we can assess that and so and so forward. There's a very brief historical background, how the concept of circular economy came into being. And it was not more than uh, 70, 80 years, like in mid uh, 20s, it, the, the system, this uh, circular economy came into being because there was deficiency of food and the resources and the poverty was there. So people started uh, using, reusing their, their products and they came up with a solution that we have to design such products and materials that could, you know, have a huge impact on the human health and the environment. And they could just save the environment and the human health altogether. And uh, so we could create and participate in a system to collect and recover all these valuables. So it started from a linear concept into the circular thing, which is cradle to cradle concept in the late seventies. So how it gave birth, it then led on for the industrialization after it was it was in the late uh, in the early 90s as well that when china started knowing the importance of circular economy and it, the the world started knowing what the circular economy is all about so it's we have to reduce the material use the material use the energy use and the waste we are producing right now and we can do that through recycling repairing and re reusing to combining economic and environmental gains. It looks so simple, and but it's a bit complicated. It is complicated because we humans have made it complicated. We have stopped moving towards the solutions. We are just creating more and more problems through waste, through um, without know knowing the consumptions, uh, without knowing the material we are using. And this is how we're just polluting the things away. So how it could be assessed, how the circular economy could be assessed, the information we should know is the material flows, what the statistics are, how the waste is coming over, how the population increase has actually increased the waste production. What are the enablers and the barriers, how the policies, they help us. So here in Pakistan, we do have policies, but the implementation of the policies are rather difficult. So the product design, is easier, but the lifespan of those models should be managed, should be checked, and how the trends they are going on, it should be implemented. Environmental impact um, assessments could be done, the benefits should be measured, and how the, these economic impacts and the benefits, they could come towards the inner and early life cycle stages of, of the product. So the key elements of the circular economy, they are the prioritize, the regenerative resource, preserve and extend what's already made, use waste as a resource. This is what we are doing right now. So we are using the waste to reduce it down rather than just dumping it away or just throwing it away into or just having a land um, all contaminated with the industrial use. Design for the future. This is what we are doing right now. Incorporate the digital technology. So the, the countries, they are moving towards the, the digital technologies. And I think Southeast Asia, they, the, the, these countries have the potential. They have the potential. They have the energy. And they could just move ahead and make the things happen. Rethink the business model, which is the actual thing. How to make money out of it how to be more sustainable, how to collaborate to create the joint value. This all is possible with the mutual understanding of the people, those who want to establish their businesses, those who know how to save their environment, 
those who know how to sustain their things up, their resources up. So this is what we're doing right now with the plastic packaging. We do collect waste. We do collect waste from the from the society, from the households, and we uh, shred it, we pelletize it, and we make new things out of it. Then we also handle, this is from the industrial side, the ash, which is which is a huge problem for the, for the entire global issues, which directly impact the climate change. The processed organic waste is there, which is right now dumped away by the industries here in Pakistan. Then the textile waste is huge. Lot can be done and we have made this happen. We are converting this, these things into usable forms. We are reclaiming soil. We know how to reclaim, how to handle the waste. And this is we are doing with the industrial um, intervention. So there's a it's, a it's a short story how we do that. We collect waste, we process it, we convert it into soil conditioners, and we reclaim the soil as well. We know that more than 80% of the soil here in Pakistan is nutrient deficient. So approximately in Pakistan, we are generating 48 million tons of municipal solid waste, which is a huge amount along with the industrial processed waste. We don't have any site for, for handling the industrial processed waste. And it was just lying there along the roadsides um, and nearby the industrial areas which is affecting 49% of the topsoil here in Pakistan. And we think this all can integrate together and which is, which is actually, which can be done. And it is actually affecting 22 billion worth of environmental degradation annually. So there's a huge business line there. And we know if we, if we do that, you can reclaim the soil, get more production out of that land and give a better option to the industries to manage their waste. For a countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, and so on, we need to, to rethink how we can help industrial side to give the solutions for their waste problems and handle it more properly. So what we what is the current and expected impact? It's very clear. 78% can be reduced its reduction of organic waste to the dump site. 15% reduction of the waste generation rate. 40% gains in productivity for the waste treatment. If we are treating the waste, so th there's more production there, 40% is more. 30% of soil can be reclaimed and 20% in energy efficiency and GAG savings. So if we go towards the economic side, the new building materials are there. 100% recycled plastic pipes for multiple uses. And it is there, the, the industry is there, the solution is there, people are doing it, but we only need a proper supply chain management. People should come up with proper solutions. People should help the governments to get the problems resolved. Then Ranga eradication could be done through soil reclamation and this, there could be more fertile land for agri purposes. And there could be more sustainable agriculture because we have already we have already uh, gone through all these things and we have seen that once a properly reclaimed soil when it start producing the, the agriculture uh, the, it is used for the agriculture purpose it ha it is more healthier it is more beneficial for the plant plant health so if we go towards the technological si technological side, it's 15% reduction of waste generation and 12% of gains in productivity for the waste treatment volume at source and products from the waste. So it's a shift from the linear to the circular and making every individual gain advantage. So new employment is there, jobs are there, social behavior gets changed because everyone, they come out of the poverty zone. So there should be, um, uh, the advisory board should be there, the lab should be there to help people to come up with, with this thing. So it's a resolve framework. Regenerate, share, optimize, loop, and virtualize and exchange. All these helps uh, a company to get into the circular economy thing, to regenerate. So it's reclaim, retain, and restore healthy health of ecosystem which is actually degrading, which is actually causing the climate shift, which is actually moving towards the more disaster um, in, the, in the environmental conditions. We must share because here in Pakistan, we have 60% of the air pollution is caused due to the car, uh, due to the fuel used in um, vehicles. 
so uh, every year we face a uh, smog here in pakistan if we can share the car uh, car we should appliances should be made with the design durability and upgradeability we should optimize uh, the waste uh, waste water uh, water efficiency then we can uh, do the waste management thing then the big data automation and optimization in remote sensing we must close the loop we know how to close the loop we do uh, think that the, if the loop is closed then the everything will be in the circular economy cycle so virtualize it dematerialize directly uh do the online shopping if you can what people they're doing it right now in in corona uh, or uh, area so exchange old with the advanced non renewable material there are many companies those who are offering it do that so how the sustainability development goals they are directly related and the circular economy strategy it's a big pie for everyone can share identify the common needs find the low cost solution collaborate with the partners information exchange so if we know something do share it with others don't think that what you are doing you 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 must not give it to others that they are going to start the same business don't do that because this it's a huge pie everyone can have the share so developmental and sharing of business models you can do that there are so many uh, platforms right now in every developing nation which is providing solutions go there explore and do knowledge sharing create strategies to become part of the circular economy achieve sdgs and get more sustainable solution for your business so we say let's reclaim 49% of the top soil into agri land reduce 67% of greenhouse emissions increase sustain sustainable waste management for industries with full potential for a, for a clean green and sustainable pakistan thank you everyone thanks thanks to you brilliant uh, zidai <laughs> very 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 interesting uh, and uh, we should disseminate this this concrete experience i mean all the know how and and then the specific steps and conclusions that you have shared with us